So current voltage graphs um, are one of the topics in uh, the unit two that we spent some time on in class, but it seemed like people struggled with. So I wanted to talk about them briefly, all right? And so the idea is that um, with these graphs, so traditionally I drew them with the current on the Y axis and the voltage on the X, but please note that actually it doesn't really matter and sometimes you can see them reversed. And if you see them reversed, then you should think about what does that mean for the actual shape of the graph. Anyway, so um, the idea is, so for example, if you were to look at um, how does current versus voltage vary in just a wire, all right, you would see that if, depending on the changing current, right, and it could be here, or if it's um, alternating current, you could get this as well. But anyway, as you increase voltage, you would see quite a large increase in the current as well, right? So obviously when there's no current, there's no voltage. So things always have to start from zero. And then the idea is that the values that you get as you increase the current would correspondingly increase the current, um, sorry, as you increase the voltage would increase the current by quite a bit. All right, so <clears throat> the idea is that this line tells you a lot of information about what is the actual relationship between the current and the voltage in any circuit. So here we're looking at a wire. I'll show you some other ones in a little bit. All right. Um, but the idea is that, first of all, you want to look at the slope or the gradient. Um, and if you were to take the slope or the gradient, which would be current divided by voltage, all right, the idea is that is actually equal to one over the resistance. All right. If they give you the one where the voltage is the y-axis and the current is the x, then of course the slope of the gradient actually equals the resistance. But for, since this is the traditional way, this is what I've drawn. So the slope and the gradient is one over the resistance, which means that the steeper the slope, that actually means that there is less resistance or the lower the resistance you have within the system or here in this case within the wire. Okay, so if I were to, I wish it would focus better. Um, so if I were to take another, maybe thinner wire, right, and I would find that maybe its line looks like this. That's supposed to be a straight line, pretend that it is, all right. So the slope here is lower, which means that the, this actually has a higher resistance. So that's one of the things. All right. The other thing that you want to note is, is the line straight or not? If the line is straight, oops, then that means that the resistance is, is constant, no matter how much voltage or how much current you have within the system. Um, the resistance is constant which may sound like an obvious thing to say, but uh, one of the favorite current voltage graphs that they throw at you does not have a straight line. So again, if I were to draw this, all right, I have my voltage, and this is a filament lamp or a light bulb, a filament light bulb, all right, then um, it doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks Um, it would look something like this, okay? Maybe not quite so flat at the ends, but that's the idea, okay? And so this is curved, the line is curved, and that tells you that the resistance is changing. And based on this idea up here that the steeper the slope, the lower the resistance. You can see that here in the middle, when the voltage is not high, right, at low, whether positive or negative doesn't matter, but at low voltage, then you have quite a low resistance, right? But as you increase the voltage, <clears throat> excuse me, here and here, the idea is that you can increase the voltage a lot, but you don't get a large corresponding increase in current. So this means that you're looking at high resistance, which I abbreviate R for sake of short. All right, and here you also have high resistance, 
right? And why is that? So the idea is that filament light bulbs, if you remember, are very, very, have a very, very thin wire running through them. And so as you increase the voltage or increase the current, then what you're basically doing is creating a traffic jam and you're increasing and the wire gets very hot, right? If you've ever touched a filament lamp, you know this, it gets very hot and then it makes it more difficult for the electrons to move through and they start to collide with each other. So that's what's going on on why you have the high resistance here that looks like a K. Um, so you have high resistance at, at high voltage, but in the middle, lower voltage, um, then it's, it's practically a straight line, right? And so you're going to get the same thing as you increase the voltage and you're increasing the current um, proportionally, right? The last type of current voltage graph that you should be aware of is fairly straightforward. And if you need a reminder of what a diode is, then you should check uh, the resistor video. So a diode is going to have a curve that basically looks like this, all right? And that means that if you have voltage traveling one way on the positive side, right, then it's going to be a extremely low resistance. This is a very steep, steep slope here. But if you try to make it go the other way, then there's basically an infinite resistance. So this has very low resistance and this basically has, can call it very high, but it's basically an infinite resistance because that's what diodes do is that they prevent, um, they allow the current to only flow in one direction. So it can only flow here, but it can't flow here on the other side. Um, so those are your three basic current voltage graphs. All right. So you need to understand the idea of how does slope tell you about the gradient. And of course, like I said, please remember that if they ever always check your axes for these, because if they give you voltage here and current here, then this relationship becomes the opposite. In that case, a steeper slope would mean higher resistance. Um, so those are your three basic current voltage graphs.